Does analog have a future? Okay. <laughs> this question comes from Ed in Lancashire, England. And Ed writes, I've owned lots of high-end gear over the years. My current turntable setup is host to a Lyra Atlas cartridge. Great cartridge. So uh, it's about as good as you can get, I think. Yeah, I, I think it is. Uh, now, however, I think recent developments in digital and DAC technology specifically have closed the gap with vinyl to where there is hardly, if any, perceivable difference. Given the relative costs involved, that is, high-end turntables versus digital setup, it seems to me that digital is the better value proposition and much easier to maintain, too. Uh, this leaves me wondering whether high-end turntables uh, and analog really have a long-term future beyond my generation. Yeah, I know. People ask that question a lot. I, I, here I am walking up. This, one of the things that attracted Terry and I, when we first saw this house, we've only owned this house here in Boulder for about five years, we pulled up the street and there was um, a sign. They, they had just gone on the market and we thought maybe it was the house next door, which is kind of big and all that, and we thought, no, it can't be this one with this long driveway that puts it kind of back up. And much to our surprise, it was. So this, this is, I mean, we don't live in a, a, a terribly fancy house, but it's small. But it's cool because it's all the way back up this long driveway, which is really neat. All right, enough about houses, COVID-19, pandemics. Here we are, short summer, you know. Um, Got to take what you can and, and do the best you can with it. So, yeah, I think analog has a great future. And let's be clear. Everything we listen to is analog. Everything, okay? So analog is the final thing that goes into our power amplifiers and powers our speaker. How it becomes analog, whether through conversion from digital bits or wiggles on a vinyl record, well, that's kind of what we're talking about. And I, I really, I want to shy away as much as I can from the terms analog and digital because they, 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 they both are, are very misleading in a way, but they'll do the job for right now. Here's where I'm going to disagree with you. Um, Ed says the differences today between vinyl and digital are, are so small that he wonders if it's even going to survive, if it's worth it. Because, hey, you know what? Analog's a pain in the ass. You gotta clean the needle, you gotta get the VTA right, you gotta take the record out. I mean, everything about analog vinyl is, is a royal pain in the butt. <laughs> but there is a glorious sound to it that just isn't digital. And digital has a glorious sound to it that just isn't vinyl. And they are very, very different. They, they really are. Um, if you come up to PS Audio after all this crazy pandemic Michigas is, is over and you have a chance, we'll put on a vinyl recording for you and play it on the big IRS system. And then we'll put on some of the world's best digital. And they are both excellent, but they are so different. So very different. And, and that's why I, I like to tell people, you know, Pick the, the system that you want to base it on. Set everything up around it. So if you're, if you're a vinyl guy, set everything, your speakers, your amps, everything around that vinyl system and have some good digital. And the opposite is true. If you have a digital system like basically mine is, set it all up around that. Adjust your speakers for that digital performance and, and get the most out of that and then enjoy your records too. But yeah, I think analog has a huge future that will go on for many generations to come. Okay, thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later.